So today I'm going to show you how to fix an old pocket transit compass. Now this is a K and E and the owner of this compass actually got this handed down to them back in like 1978. I don't know the actual year that this was made, but this was obviously before 1978. And if it's a hand-me-down, I'm going to add at least 20 years to that. So I'm not sure, but ballpark, I'm just going to guess 1950s. So one of the issues is that the needle has been remagnetized and it has reverse polarity. And the other issue is that the needle sticks. So when we rotate the Brunton, it doesn't move freely. So the first thing we have to do is to actually remove the glass. Now, before we do that, I actually gonna pull out uh, some materials that you're gonna need. So I have a couple of jewelers, flathead screwdrivers. Um, those are going to be helpful to remove the screws. I have a pocket knife. So this is going to help us lift the snap ring that is holding the glass in place. I have a suction cup device. This is just like from something that I have around the house that hangs on the wall um, and it snaps into place. So that's going to be good for pulling the glass out. I also have a graphite pencil. We're going to use the graphite on this to lubricate the needle so that it can spin freely once we've adjusted it. I have some masking tape, which I'm going to use to protect the glass while I'm trying to pry the snap ring out. And I also have a very strong magnet. Uh, we're going to be using this to remagnetize the needle. Now I'm going to keep this magnet far away from everything I'm working on because I have a couple of other front and compasses over here that I need to work on and their needles are fine and I want to avoid remagnetizing any other needles so we're going to keep that far away from everything. So the trick with these snap rings is that you need to find the place where there's essentially a break in the ring and this can be really hard to see especially if it's never been removed uh, but oftentimes you're going to find it aligned pretty close to the line of sight and since we have some of these plates that are holding the line of sight are kind of in our way, we're going to remove these. So there's four screws here. We have the two large screws that are going to remove part of the plate that then removes the line of sight. And then this smaller plate in front, which also has two screws, and we're going to just move, remove all those pieces. That's going to also remove the plate that holds that azimuth needle in place. Once we get those materials out of the way, we're then gonna put some tape on the glass, and then we're gonna use our knife to very carefully try to pry this snap ring away from the edge of the, of the compass, and then allow that to come loose, and then we can remove the glass. So once you've successfully pried the snap ring out without damaging the glass, you're just gonna pull this ring out and then I I have this suction cup and I'm just going to gently lift the glass and expose the inside so the problem with this compass was that the needle was sticking and part of that is because there is a balance issue so I'm actually going to remove the needle and I'm going to just adjust this weight until the needle moves freely. So once my needle is freely spinning, I can be pretty sure that it's not gonna stick anymore. So now what I wanna do is I wanna lubricate this needle so that it continues to spin freely. And this is a trick I learned from another video we're going to use graphite to lubricate um, where this needle floats on this little pin. So I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm just going to rub some graphite in there. And that's going to help keep the needle running freely. So one of the other problems that we were having with this pocket transit, notice that the needle has a side of it that's marked with white. So normally the north end of the needle is going to either be marked with another color or it'll be a different size shape arrow. So this white side is actually supposed to be showing us magnetic north. 
Now, if you look at this newer Brunton Transit Compass, you'll notice that the white part of the needle is facing the exact opposite direction of this compass. Now, I have both of these compasses sitting on my table pointed rel relatively in the north direction. So I, I definitely trust this one. So what happens sometimes is that these needles can actually become magnetized to reverse polarity. This can happen just by simply coming into contact with a really strong magnet and having the wrong pole remagnetize your needle. Now with these newer pocket transits, you'll notice that there are two bar magnets in here that help stabilize uh, the magnetic needle. In these older transit compasses, you'll notice that we're really relying on magnetism of the metal to point to magnetic north. So what you need is a strong magnet, ideally a neodymium magnet. Now this is just a tool that I use in the field. Uh, it's a scribe, uh, so it has a pointy end and it has a very strong magnetic end. You already notice that as I'm moving around over here that the needle is now starting to be attracted to this magnet. Now to do this correctly, requires you to know if you're dealing with the south pole of the magnet or the north pole of the magnet. Now, if you're not sure, what you can simply do is pull out your needle and let's say, okay, I think that I'm doing the right pole on here. And so I'm just gonna run this over my north end of the needle. I'm just gonna try to come close without necessarily grabbing the needle. And I'm just gonna drag it from the center out to the tip of the needle. If it touches a little bit, that's okay, All right? So if I did that correctly, this white part should now start pointing towards north. So let's see if I had the right polarity on that. And as we can see, there's no change in the needle. I still have the white part of my needles pointing more or less to the south direction. So we're gonna try the other side. We're gonna assume that the polarity of this magnet needs to be used to actually magnetize the south end. So I'm just going to come to the center of the needle and I'm just going to drag this out to the tip a couple of times. Again, I'm trying not to actually touch the needle. If it does, it's not a big deal. Okay, so I did that like three times. Now I'm going to place my needle back on here. Give it a moment to adjust. And then it looks like it flipped direction, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring my other pocket transit next to it to see if they are showing me the same orientation. And so here we can see that they both have the white point pointing in the same direction. So I've now re-magnetized the needle in this pocket transit, but you'll notice that when I did that, I don't know if you can really see this, that weight that we adjusted earlier is now off balance. So now what we're having a problem is that the strength of the magnetism in this needle is now pulling it down slightly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this weight and we're gonna move it back away from that pivot point. And then once it's balanced, we're ready to start putting this back together. Now, before I do that, this glass has probably not been cleaned in more than 50 years. So we're gonna take this opportunity to clean this glass. So I'm gonna gently put this glass back in place using my suction cup. And then I'm gonna pop this snap ring back in place. So when I took this out, the connection point was actually facing in this direction. So I'm gonna keep it that way so that I can remove it again if I need to. Uh, there's a little bit of a lip back here. So I'm gonna make sure that the ring is in place in the back first. And it can be a little bit tricky to get this back into place. So I'm gonna put some tape down here just to make sure I'm not scratching my glass. Okay, pull my tape off. Give this one quick little clean. Make sure we 
clean our mirror too while we're at it. And then we start putting things back together. So we have the plate that holds our azimuth pin. We have this little plate that goes on top and has two small screws. I'm just gonna set those screws in place before I set it down. Now, one thing you wanna be really careful about is that when you get to this point, you definitely do not wanna use a magnetic screwdriver because the last thing we wanna do is remagnetize this needle. So now I'm going to align my line of sight and I'm gonna put this other plate back on and close those hinges up. And then we have two more big screws that go in front of this plate. We have a freely moving needle and we have a needle that is correctly pointing towards magnetic north. Okay. So this is all ready to be reunited with its owner. Thanks for watching.